We'd like to welcome those of you who just watched Texas pick up a big win over West Virginia. Andrew Jones with a three in the closing seconds. The Longhorns roaring back late to win 72 to 70. We are just nicely underway here in this one. Dan Schulman, Fran Fraschilla, number two undefeated Baylor with an early two to nothing lead on TCU. Fran trying to beat the Bears in their home arena, in TCU's home arena, for the fourth time in a row. Bears are 10-0, Dan, but the last two games in the Big 12, they haven't been sharp offensively the way you would expect them to be. Now, they beat Oklahoma by double digits, but they are not in sync the way they were early in the year. Yeah, and remember, their schedule got all kinds of jumbled up because of COVID issues. They they should have had a number of big games they weren't able to play, didn't get the game in against Gonzaga, had a game against Texas postponed. So, yes, they have beaten a very good team in Illinois, but in general, obviously, they are stepping up in competition level as they get into the teeth of their Big 12 schedule. This is a guy that has to get more touches. Kevin Samuel averaging five field goals a game. This TCU team will play very similarly on the perimeter. A lot of pick and roll, four guard looks, oftentimes. Just not the experience that the Bears have. Samuel gets Thamba in the air, but can't finish. Gets it back, misses again, gets it again, and draws the foul. And however many rebounds he just got, Fran, is however many more than he got against Kansas during the week. He played 18 minutes, didn't have a single rebound in that game as the Horn Frogs were out-rebounded by 21. Yeah, very uncharacteristic for the junior from Barbuda. Beautiful island in the Caribbean. Already the all-time leading shot blocker at TCU. Heading up to 200, and here's an area where he does not excel at the foul line. 45% on the season, causing a little stress for Jamie Dixon, who is one of the nation's great pacers on the sideline as he uh, coaches his team. And uh, Coach Dixon, of course, played at TCU back in the 80s in his fifth season in Fort Worth with a record there of 93-60. and Two-time Southwest Conference Championship point guard back in those days. Mm -hmm. But you'll see a lot of ball movement, pick and rolls. Thamba comes out high. And they create for these guards. Butler off the glass, it goes, and that's the first field goal of the game. Two minutes and 48 seconds in. Dan, he's like a uh, he's like a baseball pitcher that can throw seven or eight pitches at you. He's not the most athletic, great guard in the country. He just has a great pace to his game. Yeah. Look at this. That, Ankle breaker. That. Step back for Miles, yes, and he knocks it down. You know, I was comparing this young man to Frank Mason Jr. before the Kansas game, and he went for the donut, but you got an example right there. Compact build, bulldog mentality, terrific footwork that time. And I don't know about you, Fred. Whoever does that to whoever else, like you never <laughs> like to see a guy you know, wind up on the seat of his pants because of a move oh, yeah. like that. But when it does happen, you want to see the guy make the shot, right? Like pay off yes. the move by making the shot. No doubt. That will be a gif, by the way, uh, on somebody's <laughs> Twitter feed. No question. Macy Oteague knocking down to three. Baylor shooting a preposterous 44% from three-point range as a team on the season. Take another look at this. There it is. Oh, yeah. And it was Butler. <laughs> oh. I'm laughing because that's an all-American first team and his teammates look at that. Oh, is that gonna be on Twitter tonight? No doubt Mike Miles jr. Will be telling his grandkids about that move TCU two and two in conference play Baylor undefeated at three and oh TCU's wins coming at Kansas State and then at Oklahoma State at a game in which they trailed by eight with just over two minutes left and roared back to win it in the closing seconds. R.J. Nemhard with a game-winning bucket. I almost said I was there, Dan, but uh, called that game from the confines of my uh, <laughs> humble well, In a virtual but sense, weren't we all in there? In a virtual Brad, sense, right? we, we were there, no question. <laughs> Off the bench for TCU now, Chuck O'Bannon Jr. That's him baseline. Obviously the son of Charles O'Bannon, the former UCLA star. Chuck coming off his best effort as a Horn Frog. 18 points in the loss to Kansas midweek. Yeah, I would I would say by far his best effort. Yeah. 
Mitchell a little bit strong with a three, and it is over the back of the backboard to take us to our first media timeout. We'll talk a little scotch. Some flexibility on the part of the Big 12 and the WCC, but I wouldn't totally rule it out. They want good games going into the NCAA tournament, Dan, and I've got to tell you, going back to the summer, Mark Few, Jay Wright, Tony Bennett, and Scott Drew were on the phone every day trying to put together a round, triple round robin where they could all play each other just to create those kind of environments, not just for the fans, but for their players as well. And Scott and Mark Few are still working on that. How much fun will that have been? A round robin situation, but hopefully, as we have a shot clock violation on the Horn Frogs, hopefully Gonzaga and Baylor will be able to get that game in. But I think we both agree, Fran, the Baylor game that they uh, lost out on against Texas, the postponement of that game, because it's a conference game, does that game take priority in terms of reschedule? Without a question. There is about an 11-day window between the end of the regular season in the Big 12 and conference tournament to get that game in and possibly a game like Gonzaga. So it's a possibility. Why? Because both coaches think it's a possibility. Miles misses a three. Into the game now for Baylor for the first time. And coming down with a rebound, Jonathan Chamwa Chachua, number 23, a junior, a transfer from UNLV. Actually, a sophomore, sat out as a, a redshirt last year, so a redshirt sophomore. We're going to tell you a lot about him today. Teague misses Baylor the jumper, offense. and back yeah. comes Nemhard. One of the things I talked to the Baylor coaching staff about regarding their offense, a little too much dribbling the last couple games, not enough ball movement. Nemhard with a nice move going up and under the bucket and bringing the Horn Frogs back within two. Interesting in TCU's win over Baylor last year, Nemhard did not play in that game. Uh, and they they still beat him now Desmond Bain had a terrific game scored 23 Nemhart has really come into his own this year Well his mentor was big and his mentor is watching today Desmond Bain the Former TCU stars now playing for the Memphis Grizzlies and quite play, playing quite well Well, you've already seen Texas beat West Virginia. We got this one for you now and there's lots more coming your way on ESPN Kentucky and Florida five o'clock Eastern Georgetown and Syracuse. Boy, that brings back memories from back in the day in the old Big East. And then UCLA and Arizona. The Bruins right now the only undefeated team in Pac-12 play after their overtime win over Arizona State a couple of nights ago. Huge win, and that's without Chris Smith, the outstanding senior right. has been lost for the season. Matthew Meyer down with a rebound. 6-9. He can really score. He can grab the rebound, bring it up the court. Nice dish, terrific drive by Jared Butler. They made that trip look easy. They sure did. And Jared Butler, again, he's, so, he's smooth as butter. Not an elite athlete, according to NBA scouting friends of mine, but love the way he plays. Long rebound, tipped out to Nemhard, and he'll cash in a three to get him back within a point. You know, I mentioned the, I mentioned the mentorship of Desmond Bain. This young man, R.J. Nemhart, is the son of Ruben Nemhart, who was not only an outstanding player at Weber State, Dan, he's the guy that ended Judd Heathcote's long storied career at Michigan State in the 95 NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Spent a year in the NBA as well, so R.J. Yeah. spends a lot of time working out with his dad. Some of the other Horn Frogs as well, they occasionally go to Camp Nemhart in the summer, it sounds like, and get some work in. <laughs> I got a text this morning from Des Desmond Bain, who, as I mentioned, is now at the Grizzlies. By the way, averaging nine points a game, shooting 48%, Dan, from three. And uh, very excited about the young group he left behind. Arguably one of the most popular athletes to ever grace this Fort Worth campus. And the first do that. Born Frog to be uh, drafted in more than 20 years. Baylor in transition. And the three won't go down for Adam Flagler, the transfer from Presbyterian in off the bench. Kind of a three-headed monster off the bench for Scott Drew with Flagler, Chamwa Chachua, and Meyer. All of them so effective off the bench. All starters, Dan. Honestly, they all could start anywhere in this league. There's no question. And that uh, you don't see that kind of consistency over two seasons. Of course, disappointing end of the year for teams like Kansas, Gonzaga, Baylor, Dayton because of the end of the season. But Baylor's picked up right where they left off. Yep. 
And as you saw, third in the country in offensive efficiency, fifth in defensive efficiency. They're the only school in the nation in the top nice five pass. in both of those categories. Yeah. And a foul underneath. Nice uh, baseline cut there by O'Bannon. Well, I, you know how I feel about these young guys that come off the bench. Uh, in Meyer, take a look right here. Great cut. There's a little baseline cut behind Butler. And Charles O'Bannon. Of course, not only his dad was on that great UCLA team, but his uncle Eddie was uh, mm -hmm. an outstanding player in a first round pick. And he only played 100 minutes in three injury plagued years at USC before coming to Fort Worth. Yeah, and had some injuries that he dealt with in his uh, transfer year as well. But boy, uh, 18 points, one of the few bright spots for TCU in their 93 to 64 loss to Kansas midweek. Thamba just picked up his second foul, vital back into the game for Baylor. Jamie Dixon told us last night his team did not have the energy or the physicality that they needed in the game against Kansas. He said their practice Thursday was great. Their practice yesterday was okay, and he was really curious to see how they would answer the bell here today against Baylor. Well, I can tell you, I did that game the other night, and already they're playing with more energy. I can guarantee you that. And it's the best Kansas played has, has played all season, Dan, without Marcus Garrett. They got a great performance out of David McCormick, who had been missing in action, 20 points. And uh, the outstanding freshman, Jalen uh, Wilson, DeWan Harris, all stepped up big for the Jayhawks. What a league uh, the Big 12 has been so far. Uh, Kansas, by the way, home a little bit later on today to Oklahoma. Texas Tech is at Iowa State. Oklahoma State is at Kansas State. A one-point lead for TC uh, in Fort Worth. This rivalry goes back to Southwest Conference days, needless to say. Both teams off to a sluggish start offensively. Baylor, which has been incredible offensively this year, they're just three for 13 so far, one for seven from three-point range. One of the things you'll see, some, see from TCU out front already, a lot of switching, trying to keep the ball in front of them. Good example right there. Not good enough. Mitchell turns it over. This is a similar style team to Baylor, Dan, in that they'll play three and four guards, and that allows them, one of the reasons you switch is when you can switch equal players size-wise athletically, you get to keep the ball in front of you. Harder to do against a great backcourt like this, but a better strategy than fighting through screens and dribble handoffs. Yeah, it's it's funny. One of the questions I always used to ask coaches was, well, who are you going to put on this guy? That, who are you going to put on that guy? And now the answer is you switch one through three, one through four, occasionally even one through five. So everybody covers him, right? Exactly. Don't Miles kicks it to the corner. Good recovery, though, by Baylor. Yeah, I thought Mike Miles should have shot that. And Nemhard just picked up. Which way did they call that? They call that on. I think that's on Nemhard. Nemhard. Because Mark Mark Vidal feels pretty good about picking up yep. that charge. Yeah. Well, Fran, that's the second on Nemhard. TCU's got themselves a problem right now. Well, and Jamie Dixon is a very conservative coach when it comes to playing a guy with two fouls. It'll be interesting to see if Nemhard is fouled out of the next 11 minutes by his coach or not. Yeah, yeah. this is one of those markdown time and score. TCU was yep. up one with 11-11 to go in the half when Nemhard went to the bench. So who, on the offensive end for TCU, who picks up the slack right now, Fred? It's, it's got to be Miles and it's got to be P.J. Fuller, both capable of doing that. Good inbounds. Off the knee of Meyer out of bounds, and Baylor just still not clicking. Yeah, I will have to give turnover. TCU. Yeah, TCU credit, Dan. They are locked in, and they play that similar style of size. So I'm not surprised they've been able to throw a little uh, junk into the machinery of that Baylor offense early. There's a fair amount of youth on this TCU team. They do appear to have a lot of young talent and a team that should get better and better over the next couple of years. Now an offensive foul called on Jaden Ledee, the 6'9 junior from Houston, as he tried to post up. Guess who took it? Mark Vidal. Mark Vidal last year, arguably one of the best defensive players in the country. He and uh, he and Freddie Gillespie did a great job with this young guy, Jonathan 
Chamwa Chachua out of the camera out of Cameroon who I think Dan in the early going is one of the hardest playing young players in the country yeah, so he is one of energy. our favorites. Yeah, we'd yep. say it. And it right on cue. Yep. Every day, John, with the jam. We talked to him about him a lot on our Zoom uh, conference call last night that we had yep. as a crew. His energy, both on the court and when he's on the bench, it is absolutely infectious. He is such a fun guy to watch. Without a question. One of the graduates of the NBA's Global Academy in Australia. And... Uh, a great talker on defense, high energy, and watch him run the court today, folks. Keep your eye on him on every offense and defensive transition. You will not find better runners at that spot than him. He started off a year at UNLV, played for Marvin Menzies there. Menzies had coached Pascal Siakam at New Mexico State, so he was locked in on uh, some of the, the goings-on of the great players coming out of Cameroon. And he had Chamwa Chachua for a year with Menzies when there was a coaching change at UNLV. Then Chamwa Chachua transferred and winds up now playing for Baylor. And you only mentioned Pascal Siakam because he plays for your Toronto Raptors. <laughs> We're a little <laughs> sluggish out of the gate so far this year. But they'll get it going. Yes, they will. And a baseline jumper for Jared Butler ties the game. He's off to a good start at the offensive end. You notice, Dan, how, how smooth he is. He really doesn't beat you with the high, hard, fastball. It's more like that Greg Maddox right. pitching catalog, you know. Yeah. He beats you with a lot yeah. of different uh, fakes. He's a finesse guy. Boy, another yeah. great baseline cut. And the basket for Francisco Farabello, who, like Chamo Chachua, comes out of that NBA Global Academy, right? You got it. Teammates. Young man from Argentina. They know each other very well from spending a year in Australia. They're the teammates right there. Yeah, that's right. And Farabella tried to help him out. John Wachacho said, we're not teammates today, my man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to be smiling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this summer, Dan, he couldn't get into the Baylor weight room, so the Baylor weight room came to him. He, he brought weights and an exercise bike, bike to his apartment, put it out on his patio, his porch, and uh, his teammates said he would be up there all hours of the day and night. But if you want to get Scott Drew talking, just ask him about the guy they call Everyday John. That kind of work Everyday ethic. John, EJ. Yeah. There's a steal. Tell me, Butler I'm finishes you. at the other end to tie the game. You said finish, Dan. It's about what he does as well as any guard in America is finish. And again, not with that we athlete over the rim athleticism. That time he threw the changeup. <laughs> Baylor undefeated, 10-0 on the season. Nice cut. Nice kick. And Kevin Easley didn't want the three. Miles, difficult shot. Yeah, he, he's being guarded by one of the best on-ball defenders in the country. Trying to go baseline, pull up jumper, not there. He's got his own. Mitchell for three. In and out. And TCU ball. It's Miles. They were starting to get good shots, just just not dropping yet. And Miles playing well, fouled, and will be at the free throw line when we come back. Well, this are uh, because of proto COVID protocols, not not practicing. Yeah, they've had guys miss practice time, guys miss games. Uh, Francisco Farabello was recently out for four games due to COVID protocols, just getting his legs underneath him again. Jamie Dixon, of course, had a great run at Pittsburgh before coming back to his alma mater at TCU. And Jonathan Chamwa Chachua just went to the bench. The foul right before the last timeout was his second. So Thamba's got two. Chamwa Chachua's got two. And both of those guys are on the bench right now. Bit of a different look for Baylor. And for TCU, outstanding defense through the first 12, 13 minutes in this half. Again, they match up size-wise very well with this quick backcourt of Baylor. 
Four guards and Vital out there right now for the Bears. Pick and roll off the fingertips of Vital. And here comes Farabella in transition for the Horn Frogs. Corner three will go down. Kevin Easley Jr. to extend the TCU lead. That young man's played very, very well the last few games. A young man from Indianapolis, Indiana. Fuller. By the way, they called that last basket a two, so it's a four-point deficit. Fran, this matches the largest deficit Baylor's had at any point this season. Wow, wow. <laughs> Levitt's game in. Mitchell the kick. Butler the three. And it'll be TCU ball, it looks like. Yeah, TCU ball with a four-point lead. Boy, what a job Scott Drew has done uh, at Baylor. As we remind you about the big lineup over the next couple of days, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time, it'll be the Ravens and the Titans in an NFL wild card game. And then, of course, Monday night, the national championship game between Alabama and and Ohio State. I would ask you, Fran, who you're picking, but I, I see on uh, on your Wikipedia page you spent a couple of years in Columbus back in the oh, day, yeah. so I guess you're Go going Bucks. Buckeyes, huh? Hang on, Sloopy. <laughs> I sang Hang on, Sloopy the other night, Dan. That, that did not go well. No? But, uh, no, no, no. I'm joking. It's just a great, great <laughs> sports environment. Columbus, Ohio, state of Ohio, of course. Yeah. Buckeye football is uh, the second religion in that it state. It is. Absolutely. No, no question. A trap on Miles. He gets out of trouble. Nemhard back in the game now for TCU with two fouls. And the offensive rebound. Samuel had it and then had his pocket picked by Butler. Jared Butler always under control. Spread him out. They need a ball screen somewhere. Cross court in for Teague. They did. You know, when you shoot 43% from three, Dan, it's just like a 300 hitter who goes over four. Mm -hmm. They don't really have inside scoring, and as great a shooting team as they are, they're reliant on having to make a lot of threes nightly. When they went up to uh, Iowa State last Saturday, Iowa State did something different to them that, that, than anybody all year. They went under every ball screen daring Baylor to shoot behind the screen not something the Bears were used to and it really caused them some trouble so you can be a great shooting team and still be defending Nemhard missing the front end of the one and one Baylor today just one for ten from three-point range and we mentioned uh, earlier coming into the game number one in the country in three-point field goal percentage at almost 44 percent they're staying in the game right now because jared butler keeps finding different ways to score absolutely at the basket too he's got that uh floater game layup game down mm, boy samuel had a chance to go up with that but instead tried to dish it off yeah watch the pace he plays with and watch how he uses the rim high off the glass knows every angle of the board and I know I keep using that baseball analogy, but he's like a Mike Maddox that he can come at you from different arm angles, different speeds. And uh, well, just you has flattered a Mike Maddox. You, you, Mike Maddox is happy to be mentioned, but oh, yeah, I think yeah, you yeah, wanted to say Greg, Greg Maddox. Maddox. <laughs> well, Greg, Mike Maddox, oh, no, didn't I tell you? Mike Maddox taught Jared Butler the floater game, you know, and the, the off-speed pitches. That's yeah, what I Mike meant. Maddox, of course, Greg's older brother, one of the great pitching coaches in Major League Baseball. That's right. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Texas Ranger guy. He was with the Rangers for quite a while. Yeah. A very low scoring first half. Neither team shooting the ball well, and both teams coughing it up some as well. Yeah, not a good decision there on the roll. Here he comes again. Never out of change control. Of pace. Yep. And deflected out of bounds. It'll be TCU ball, much to the consternation of Scott Drew and what can you say Fran about the job that Drew has done in Waco this is one of my favorite college basketball stats today is the 252nd game for Drew at Baylor where they've been ranked prior to him getting there they had been ranked twice in program history it's really it, it's unbelievable the job that he's done over the last 18 years it's 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 arguably the greatest rebuilding job in college basketball when you have to remind people that they not only were coming off devastating NCAA probation, but 
the murder of a, of a player uh, in the program by another player. And when Scott Drew arrived, and I knew him and his family, I thought he was crazy, Dan, to take this job after leaving Valparaiso. But he's, I, I, I'm going to say this, Dan. I honestly believe Scott Drew will be in the Naismith Hall of Fame someday. That's how good a job he not only has done so far, but this program is not leaving the national scene anytime soon. Yeah, no, he's got him rolling right now. Got a great class coming in, and now they've got the lead after the bucket by Flo Thamba. Bears up two. One, going back to the end of last year, 15 of their last 17. And quite frankly, they have been transformed from the 40 Acres Country Club to a tough, gritty, hard-nosed team. And they're really impressive. Today was a win that epitomizes the kind of toughness that has grown in that program the last two years. I mean, it is unquestionably, unquestionably a league where you could see Baylor, Texas, Kansas, all getting an extremely high seat in the NCAA tournament. And that's not to exclude programs like West Virginia or Texas Tech. I mean, those five are all terrific. And then you got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State knocking on the door, trying to make a name for themselves this year as well. Yes. Got five on that shot clock now. Does Ben Hart know it? He does now. Might be too late. And they don't get it off in time. Yep. Got to have that clock in your head. And I think RJ fell down once he realized it. Boy, I'll tell you this. You play a game where you've got six made field goals and 12 turnovers. You're lucky to be down only two. And, and down two to the number two team in the country. Watch this guy. Yeah. Oh, I love this guy. Dan, you and I have been watching him since his freshman year. He was a cartoon character as a freshman. People kind of laughed at the fact he was a shot a minute. But Matthew Meyer has improved dramatically on both ends of the floor. His scoring has more than doubled from last season. He's scoring 10 points per game in about 15 minutes per game. But they're so good, he doesn't get more minutes than that. But he's got the look of a guy next year, Fran, who is, you know, the numbers just blow up next year, don't you think? Yeah, there's, there's no question. Take a look. Watch, uh, watch this now. This is 6'9", folks. And this is shaking and baking, and he can pass it. He can defensive rebound, and he's gotten bigger and stronger, Dan. We remember his freshman year over here when he dropped 18, but he's not ready yet. He is not ready yet, but I was at the game on Wednesday against Oklahoma, and I have some good NBA scouting friends, and we agreed he might be the best NBA prospect on this team, but it's not now. It's not now. It's a year now, and by the way, he's one of those guys that can stay five years and play. Right. But uh, great transformation from the young man from Austin Westlake. At the line, Jaden Ledee, a junior from Houston, spent a year at Ohio State. 6'9", 240, that free throw, the first one that he made, and now this one as well. That snaps a four and a half minute scoreless drought for TCU, and the foul went on Flo Thamba, his third. Well, to your point just a minute ago, they're only down two points. Mm-hmm. With Nemhard on the bench for a pretty good chunk of the first half. He picked up two, came back in, but now he's gone back to the bench again. So it looks like Jamie Dixon will try to get through the half, keep it close, and, and make sure that Nemhard doesn't pick up his third. Good ISO ball right there by Davion Mitchell. He had Farabello on him. A good defender, but not quick enough to stay in front of the Auburn, Auburn transfer. Now a junior. There you see Francisco, whose father... Dan, I covered the 2006 FIBA World Championships in Saitama, Japan, and his dad, his dad was on that team with uh, hmm. Mano Ginobili and the company. The National Championship game presented by AT&T, Alabama, and Ohio State, Monday at 8 Eastern. And we'll have you covered on every platform, TV, radio, and digital. And well, France really got the Buckeyes. That. Yeah, I got the Buckeyes. I thought they really took off late in the year when Trey Sermon, the Oklahoma transfer, who did not have the benefit of summer pr uh, conditioning and really wasn't a known commodity, uh, got a chance to play. And certainly the last two games, he's been as good a back as there has been in the country. Although 
Najee Harris is pretty good for Alabama. He's had a great four-year yeah. career. Should be a lot of fun Monday night. Ravens and Titans tomorrow afternoon, and then Alabama, Ohio State, Monday night in the national championship game, part of the big lineup over the next couple of days. And Nemhart back in there, so Jamie Dixon kind of yo-yoing his best guy in there on offense and defense as Meyer tried to step in and take a charge, but it was against him. Take a look now. Watch Matthew Meyer. And he's clearly on that restricted arc easy call and yeah. I like what Jamie Dixon is doing I think yo-yo is a perfect description Because you don't want your best player to sit for the equivalent of an hour real time Between the end of the first half the 15 minutes in the locker room and then uh, when they start the second half So I'm a big fan Dan of playing a veteran player with two as right. long as they understand how to keep themselves out of trouble on the defensive end and Nemhard is a fourth year junior medical red shirt in his first year now you can see with him going back on defense he goes back to the bench again yep yeah, as of this morning TCU was about the 315th youngest team in the country of only 330 that are playing basketball this season at the D1 level so 11 newcomers and you like their young perimeter players, right? You think they're on the upswing? I do. Yeah, that very much so. They just have to allow these young men to grow up. You know, college basketball, as we've seen this year, the best teams have gotten old and are staying old, and this is not one of those teams. And I'll tell you one thing Jamie Dixon's going to like. The rebounds are 21-11 in favor of the Horn Frogs after they were out-rebounded by 21 by Kansas during the week. So Jamie Dixon wanted to see a little more physicality. He's getting it. Yes, he has and, and Baylor's offense has helped the cause because they have not been proficient at making shots Good matchup miles one of the, miles. Yep He is off to a great start in his freshman year averaging better than 13 a game shooting 40% from three everything but the finish on the floater That's nice. Yep, that's wow. nice pretty and Dan, that started because Matthew Meyer grabbed that rebound and instead of looking for a guard, used the first two or three dribbles to bust out Ziana, who came to Butler because two of his former, or two of the uh, guys that played here who played for his coach, Tim Bird, in Louisiana, recommended Scott Drew highly. He is carrying Baylor offensively. They've only made one three, but they've got 18 points in the paint. He's got most of them. Four-point lead for the Bears. Miles with the ball for the Horn Frogs. Very difficult shot, but he does draw the foul. Well, Mike Miles Jr., what I like about this particular game, unlike Tuesday against Kansas, is his aggressiveness to the rim. Take a look. Let's watch right here as he gets downhill. And uh, maybe got away with a little travel, but you see the foul. And Mike Miles, who grew up about 25 miles east of Fort Worth, Lancaster, Texas, one of the best guards in the state of Texas last year, decides to stay home. And the numbers have borne out why he is uh, thought to be a very good prospect. Jamie Dixon offered him a scholarship when he was a high school freshman. And he makes them both to make it a two-point game, so Baylor could hold for the final shot of the first half. Hey, Dan, do you see that Frank Mason con uh, comparison a little bit in yeah. Mike Miles? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, body yeah. type similar, body and the type. style similar. Yep. Big loop, he's back. There you see the numbers. Now, on the right, those are Frank Mason's four-year career stats. Let's keep in mind that his senior year, he was National Player of the Year before going on to the NBA. But that's my, uh, that's my opinion, and I'm going to stick to it. We'll see how Mike's career t pans out. Gonna be a ball screen coming or a ghost screen which is a fake ball screen let's take a look oh it's a double screen pick your choice <laughs> baylor goes left and loses it and we talked about this a couple times in the first half when you are a great shooting team no matter how good a shooting team you are that number is volatile Game to game and uh, today they're having one of those games at least in the first 20 minutes where they're just not making shots And TCU has done a great job of chasing them off the line and contesting 
Yeah, Butler had, or Baylor rather, had some foul trouble in the front court as well in the first half. Good start in the second half on a baseline drive and a finish for Davion Mitchell, who's headed to the line as well. Yeah, by design. You see, Miles went over the screen, and Mitchell was able to separate. And look, Miles never got back in front, and that allowed the young man from Hinesville, Georgia, Auburn transfer, Davion Mitchell, to get to the basket. So good job by Baylor out of the timeout to start the second half. Baylor not only is undefeated this year, they have hardly trailed at any point this season. Faced a deficit as large as four points today, matching their largest deficit at any point in any game this year. And boy, good defensive play there by Butler to come up with a steal. Yeah, I'm anxious to see how the Bears react the first four minutes of the second half. Mitchell aggressive in the first minute of the second half, but he misses the three. You mentioned Ruben, uh, excuse me, R.J. Nemhard's too, so he's got to stay aggressive, but he's also got to be careful not to run anybody over because they need him on the floor the next 20 minutes. Good cut. Not good enough. But, yeah, Fuller couldn't thread the needle. Another TCU, TCU turnover and another foul at the other end going against the Horn Frogs. Looks like it'll be Fuller. Dan, you remember you know, Tweedy Carter and Enrico Gathers. Yes. Uh, Baylor has always had a Louisiana pipeline, including Mark Vidal from Lake Charles, who's on this roster right now. This young man originally committed to Alabama and was on campus and decided that he wanted to transfer, and he did. And because of the relationship between his high school coach and Scott Drew, that, that marriage has been made in heaven mm -hmm. as, as that's mark vital yep that's mark vital being mark vital right there they, yeah. they need more of that he had an absolutely outstanding season a year ago his numbers though are quite a bit down so far this year friend yeah i don't think he's as in good a shape as he was a year ago and that's something he can certainly improve on because he's only at his best as a high energy player See, I think the ball sticks too much here. As good as Davion Mitchell is, I think that ball has to move. They're all great off the dribble, but I'd like to see that ball go side to side a little bit more. Teague still going. Off the glass, around and out. Offensive rebound, Thamba. And Vidal is fouled. So Baylor coming out with a little more intensity here in the second half. And getting it from Mark Vidal, as you mentioned, the fifth-year senior who last year, Dan, you said it, you saw it yourself. He was the equivalent of uh, the bad boys Dennis Rodman for this team. And remember, Dennis Rodman, if he doesn't rebound, is not Dennis Rodman. This young guy, if he doesn't play at all-out intensity the way uh, EJ, Everyday John, and, of course, the way Vidal did last year, the way Freddie Gillespie did, I think this this guy has room to really step up his game the last eight weeks of his career. Well, let's be honest. They're, they're playing for a national championship this year. I mean, they were in the conversation last year. They are in the conversation this year. Yes, the schedule will get tougher as they get deeper into conference play as Vital makes them both. And it's a 7-0 run for the Bears to start the second half. And this is the kind of uh, start you wanted to see from a team that did not play its best the first 20 minutes. They don't really play through Samuel. They don't look for him that often. They do here. And they should pay it off. Boy, did yeah. you just see the future, Fran? How did you know that was coming? Well, no, you know, five <laughs> shots a game, and I watch these guys, and... Uh, they're great with him setting screens, but the big guy is agile for his size, Dan. Teague using the ball screen and fouled on his way to the bucket. Watch this seal up the lane. See how he takes his, the, the little guard up to the foul line almost? And Kevin Samuel gets it done. You know, I mentioned the island of Barbuda, which is part of Antigua. Back in 2017, Hurricane Irma not only wiped out the whole island, everybody had to be evacuated. 
all 1,600 people, things are getting back to normal. But the big fella, Big Loopy, as he's known, has uh, been a mainstay here in Fort Worth his first three seasons. 6'11", 255. You like his agility for size? Yeah, I think so. It's getting better every year, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, at my age, fan, I love anybody's agility. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Yeah. You're not a judge of agility at your age, at my age. <laughs> Butler with a three. He's got 16. And Baylor up by seven right now. Yeah, look at the intensity level. You watch the ball pressure and the effort. You'll see a, a sense of urgency to start the second half for Baylor. They go into Samuel again, and he scores yep. again. I like this guy, Dan. I think they could balance their offense with a little bit more touches in the paint for the big fella, and you also want to reward him for the job he does shot blocking and defending. Butler is fouled as the fouls are piling up on the Horn Frogs here in the opening minutes of the second half. That is their 15 foul in barely three and a half minutes. We just saw a James, a James Harden move right there from uh, Jared Butler. He put that ball out on the drive and dared the defender to reach in and knock it loose and picked up the foul. Take a look, Dan. We talked about being crafty, right? Watch him put the ball out there, up in the air. Yep. And that that kind of that's like going fishing, putting a little bait on that hook, you know? Yeah, that's Come right. block this <laughs> shot, big guy. <laughs> Chamwat Shachua coming back into the game for Baylor as Thamba will sit down. Uh, Jared Butler is on the verge of a nice milestone as well. Came into the game with 980 career points. Sitting at 997 right now. Nemhard much more efficient this year, not over penetrating as much, a lot of work in the gym, making better decisions, and all of his percentages have gone way up this season. No, that's a great point, Dan. He's gotten better each of the three years, and we've got to give some credit not only to his dad, an outstanding player, but Desmond Bain as well. And back come the Bears in transition. They got numbers. Good work. Vital yeah. from Butler. Great patience. Watch Jared Butler, man. What patience. Pretty good one. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this. How about this? Jalen Suggs, uh, Dimitri Tr uh, Trice, yeah. and Brad Davis from Wisconsin. Butler, all really good high school point guards and quarterbacks. Oh, he fell down again. So Miles has, figuratively <laughs> speaking, broken the ankles of Jared Butler twice in the same game. Yeah. And Butler's still having a good game. <laughs> yeah, he is. Boy, Meyer just uh, threw one up for grabs right there. Nemhard cups up with it. But TCU cannot take advantage despite having numbers at the other end. Oh, and wow. another what turnover. And this time they'll get the easy deuce for Nemhard. Boy, what a what a pair of hands by Mike Miles. Just took that ball right out of Jared Butler's hands. Baylor's kind of flirting with danger here, Dan, because you don't want to keep a team like TCU in this game. Looked like they were going to open up that lead. Good challenge. Teague into the paint and a little bit strong off the jumper. The foul going against uh, 10 schools on the men's and women's side, assistant coaches and student athletes. They bring in speakers for Zoom calls and just try to raise the awareness and the togetherness of the group as a whole. Yes, and then the Big 12 Conference uh, spearheaded by Bob Bowlesby, the commissioner, and the associate commissioner, Jeff Jackson, on board as well. I've gotten to know, as you have, Dan, some of these great assistant coaches like uh, Jerome Tang right there, the associate head coach. Guys that are great mentors and leaders and are going to be really good head coaches. But in the meantime, they're using their platform to help educate many of these young men and women who are not just student athletes, but uh, guy, guys and ladies who are going to be great 
uh, people going forward and uh, serving society. And it's a great initiative. Kudos to all these great men and women. Absolutely. And still, at this time, every two or three weeks, they're getting together virtually, and, and Dwayne was telling us participation is incredibly strong. And now there's a real sense of camaraderie, uh, even between the assistant coaches from the other school. Like, uh, you'll send a text. It won't just be, hey, good game, see you later. Now there are deeper conversations, more, more of a connection between people from different schools. Exactly. Tony Benford's been around this league a long time, former player at Texas Tech on that TCU bench. And... Uh, it's a great idea, given where we're heading in society with the uh, mm -hmm. uh, social justice, awareness. Uh, great, great job by these guys and ladies. Six-point lead for Baylor over TCU. The Bears, the second-ranked and one of the few remaining undefeated. Second foul on Matthew Meyer. For Baylor, Jared Butler, if you're just joining us, he's got 17, but the rest of Scott Drew's guys are just 8 for 24 for 23 points in the game. And this is a team that comes into the game averaging 91 points per game. Yeah, and Dan, you know, it's very easy from 30,000 feet to not watch this team and say, oh, they're, they are clearly one of the couple best teams in the country. Their coaching staff doesn't feel like they've played well in the last two games, and we're just seeing a carryover. Now, they did beat Oklahoma by... 17 but uh, up at Iowa State on the road last year very similar type of game to what we're seeing today yeah and you could say this as that's going to count and a foul the bucket for Mitchell you could say this about any team in the league but boy oh boy look at the upcoming schedule you could really say it for TCU but oh, for yeah. Baylor let's start there they're home to West Virginia then they go to Lubbock to take on the Red Raiders then they come home and play Kansas then they go to Stillwater I mean there are no days at the beach in the Big 12 this year no Dan this will this will this will really affect the head coach's mental health when you look at the schedule down the road I've always been a believer in just starting a one game winning streak because it's very easy to look at that schedule and be uh, flummoxed yeah. by what's ahead for as you pointed out for every single team in this league it, it might even be tougher for the horn frogs in the next couple of weeks what they're dealing with uh, the stretch that jamie dixon's team is in right now and, and <laughs> you know as well as i do you know better than i do friend there, there's going to be some team at the end of the regular season is going to be like seven and eleven in this league and you're going to say you know what that's a pretty good basketball team there are just so many others that were a little bit better no, there's no question and this year particularly with the uh NCAA still committing to 68 teams and the, the numbers, the, the analytics are probably not going to be the same. I think the eye test, uh, watching teams that are 8 and 10 in the Big 10 or 7 and 11 in the Big 12. There you see the young man from Argentina. Yeah, you're right. It's not, uh, it's not just uh, every day at the beach for Francisco Farabello. I love saying that name, Francisco. <laughs> Sounds like a movie I watched over Christmas. Elf, Francisco. <laughs> Farabello. And look at those numbers. And, you know, 21 over four, two of those four turnovers have come today. He came yeah, into, the, yeah. this, he came into the, the game <laughs> with 20 assists and only two turnovers on the season. I mentioned his dad who played professionally for 23 seasons around the world. And back in 06, Scola and Alberto and... Nocioni and Ginobili was part of that team that played in uh, the World Championship and the 96 Olympics. Dan, here's a guy we haven't talked about today, Adam Flagler. Another one of those big South guys who's transferred up and already having a great impact on this team. You mentioned transfer from Presbyterian, better than 11 points per game off the bench. The three-headed monster of Meyer, Flagler, and Shamwa Chachua. The Baylor bench averaging about 39 points per game this year. Granted, they've had some blowout wins, so that'll add to the bench numbers. As Miles, who had a huge first half, misses the three, and then the foul was called on Ladee. And Farabello leaving the court and limping as he does so, Fran. Yep. Sophomore. From Argentina, has played a lot of international basketball. He'll head to the locker room. 
Well, that's not what Jamie Dixon wanted to see. He also didn't want to see his team pick up nine fouls in less than eight minutes to open the second half. Lothamba at the line for the Bears. Baylor leaving some points on the free throw line right now. And that door is still cracked for TCU. Baylor's doing a lot of switching off the ball, Dan, so it's almost a zone defense on the weak side. Nemhard with a runner from the baseline won't go down. Rebound Thamba. Thamba's going to set that high ball screen if he can and then roll to the rim. Nice spin move. But Vital had it knocked away. And then Miles with a full head of steam is fouled at the other end. 11.39 to go in Fort Worth. Number two Baylor up seven on TC. And he has done that, Dan. And one thing I like about him is he won't turn 21 until next August. So he still has a lot of room for growth. And uh, it's been very impressive so far. And uh, speaking of impressive, this is a guy that needs to have an impressive last 11 minutes, R.J. Nimhart. Yep. Saddled with a little bit of foul trouble in the first half, a big three there, and TCU hanging around within four. Nice drive, left hand layup that won't go down for Mitchell. Ball's on the deck, it's a wrestling match right now. And it's gonna be a tie up, the possession arrow will give it to TCU. Mitchell down the lane, missed that layup, but uh, again, watch the challenge inside by Kevin Samuel, who's closing in on 200 blocks, and that's not a block, but that's a scare right there from the 6'11 youngster. And I said, I, Dan, I said it a couple minutes ago, this is a real danger zone for Baylor because they're not going through the motions, but they're not pulling away. And if you're TCU right now, you have a golden opportunity at home to knock off number four. Uh, although Miles slips and just trying to get rid of the ball, turned it over, and Butler is going to pay it off at the other end. Well, pay it off is a great way to put it because he is so good around the rim. He's very much, Dan, in that uh, Jalen Brunson... Uh, Monte Morris type of, of a point guard uh, when your best player at the point goes out He's gonna run your team for eight to ten minutes in that second and third quarter Watch the anticipation right now by Butler and this is what I love watch the finish always under control And he has a, an affinity for using that window Got a long-term relationship with that backboard. <laughs> He's got seven two-point field goals in this game. Doesn't it feel like about six of them have been in the paint frame? Absolutely. Nemhard for three. Got another one, and Here it's a three-point game. Highly confident. What I like about R.J. Nemhard, he's told us a couple times during the season, I don't need to go out and get 25. I want the game to come to me because I want my young teammates to grow. But when I have to take over, I will. Well, he's doing it right now. He's got eight of their last ten. Nice pull up there by Macy O.T. to get the lead back to five for the Bears. Yeah, Macy has been a little quiet today. But the last few games, he's been averaging 17 a game. Boy, Nemhart's getting into an extra gear last couple of times down the court, though, for the Horn Frogs. Yes, he has. I mentioned his dad, who's a New Yorker from the Bronx. And he came to junior college, Dan, in Texas, in Paris, junior college, before going to Weber State, where he was the Big Sky Player of the Year. And when his dad played in junior college, this is a great junior college league, Texas. Some guy named Sam Cassell was his nemesis <laughs> at the same time. Sean Kemp was in the league at the time. Boy, that's pretty good junior college league, as you were pretty saying. That's, league, that's, yep. that's, that's some good competition right there. Here's one more for you, okay? I didn't say, I saved the best for last. Nick Van Exel. Oh, wow. <laughs> I want to see highlights from that. You got any highlights oh, from that yeah. league? <laughs> that's a good league, man. Boy, the first four or five minutes of the second half, Baylor took the lead, and it looked like they might pull away. They have been unable to do it. A touch inside for the big fella, and Butler fouls Samuel. Good job by the big fella rolling hard. 
He, he is a ball screener, and again, I think they should post him up more, but he's a great ball screener. What he's got to do is get off the ball screen a little quicker and sprint harder to the rim and create more of a problem. And now TCU gives it right back. And I thought he let that ball go. Take a look right here. I thought he let that ball go. No, he can't. Nobody touched it, so he can't pick Nobody up the, it, yeah. the loose ball. That's right. I thought it hit the backboard or was touched. Good call. 17 call. turnover committed by yep. the Horn Frogs today. Kentucky, Florida coming up next. All kinds of great games tonight on ESPN. You can see UCLA and Arizona to cap off the evening at about 9 Eastern time. Deep one. Deep one for Butler. Dan, the reason that play happened was because the big fella, JTT or EJ or Jonathan Chamo Chachua, set a screen so hard and rolled so hard, it sucked the guard in from the weak side. Yeah, we have it on pretty good authority that Chamo Chachua leads the Big 12 in things you don't see in the box score, right? He does all of that stuff. Exactly, and this guy does things you see in the box score. For that just looking at that picture right now. <laughs> I gained three pounds looking at the picture today. <laughs> no, he, the kid has great energy. He hasn't had a great statistical, but look at him, look at him out at the point of the screen. And he is a great, he's the eyes of the defense. See, every big man who talks loud, often, and early becomes the eyes of a team's defense. Jamie Dixon right now, talk about flummoxed. But I just love this kid. I fell in love with him last year when he was practicing against Vital and Gillespie. Dan, you mentioned it earlier. He only averaged three points a game at a mid-major UNLV. The improvement is rapid. Yeah. And he is a great guy to watch away from the ball. If you're watching the game, it can take your eye off the ball. Uh, watch what he does. Again, the stuff that doesn't show up in the box score, but boy, do his coaches appreciate it. Well, and his teammates even more so because he creates opportunities for those guards to get those open shots because he's such a hard roller to the rim. And again, we got to point out, you mentioned it earlier in the season, EJ. Is his nickname given to him by a uh, staff member Al Nunez? EJ means everyday John because there's not a day that he doesn't come into the gym and isn't the hardest working guy in the program. Yeah, accepts his whatever minutes he gets, accepts whatever role he gets. You can always see him just clapping and encouraging and talking and high fiving. I mean, he's all of that. Having seen this program for 18 years, I, I'll predict now he will leave Baylor as one of its most beloved players because of not only what he does on the court, but uh, off the court and away from the court. Just a great young man. And again, from Cameroon through Australia at the NBA Global Academy and now ensconced in Waco. You know, part of the culture that you see now with Baylor, they, they bring in a lot of international kids. That's been a strength of the program in recent years under Scott Drew. They also bring in a lot of kids who are okay with sitting out a year as a redshirt. We all understand yeah. the landscape as we know it is changing now and, and, and probably forever more. But Chamo Chachua was happy uh, to accept that redshirt year, to sit out, to get better, to work on his skills. Um, they get guys who aren't in as much of a rush, it seems, as a lot of other programs get. Well, I think, I think you would probably agree that Villanova and Gonzaga are two of those programs that get that same type of kid. Now or fastball that you can get hitters out with a variety of pitches. I love all these baseball analogies you're bringing today. <laughs> that's for that's for my friend who's now in the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, TCU not helping themselves with turnovers today. Uh, in the second half, they are 6 for 16 with 6 turnovers. And they have turned it over 18 times in the game. But they'll get a much-needed bucket right there. Samuel to miss, but O'Bannon there to clean it up. Well, Jamie Dixon has lamented turnovers all season long, and you would expect that from a, a team with 11 newcomers. You see a lot of switching out top right now. Four guard Rook. That's deep. Butler again. Man, oh, oh man. man. From almost the exact same spot he hit one a couple of minutes ago. 
You know, the one thing that's got to be pointed out is this is a team, we've mentioned the formula, the transfers, the red shirts. This is a team of gym rats, Butler and Teague. And uh, Davion Mitchell live in that gym back in Waco all hours of the day and night, and it pays off. You know, and it sounds like a cliche, but, you know, this is not just a team. This is a program. This is a culture. This is something that's been building over years. And, you know, they've done it at times largely, Fran, without a ton of top 100 recruits. Now they've got one of the top four or five recruiting classes coming in next year. And they'll have a number of, you know, there will be some turnover, but they're going to have some oh, yeah. of these guys back. As you said, Baylor's not going away anytime soon. No, Dan, and I guarantee you that great recruiting class is going to come in unentitled, if you will, if that's a word, mm -hmm. not entitled. They've got a young man sitting out right now, Dane Danier from Minnesota, about 6'11", 260, who was a top 60 recruit a year ago, and he's redshirting this year because he's bought into this. We don't need instant you know, success right now. There you see the class that's coming in. Jeremy Sochan, by the way, is a kid from overseas who I just watched, he's playing in Germany, and he is a monster athlete and built like, uh, remember Ish Wainwright? Mm -hmm. He's built like Ish Wainwright, but he's six foot eight. The only thing is Scott Drew was uh, boasting to me, hey, don't forget about all the Canadians that we've had here over the years. And I said, well, you don't have one now. I mean, if you, you want me to talk about it, go get another Canadian. Well, Brady Hess, Brady Hess was pretty good. Brady Hess, oh, big fella. Jamwa Chachua with the emphatic <laughs> slam. Well, Kenny Cherry was pretty good. Brady Heslop, believe me. Yeah, Scott Drew is not Come sleeping on, on the Canadians. No. But Mike Miles just was huge in the first half at 15 for TCU. He's been a little bit quieter in the second half. He's got 17 of the game. Nemhard 13. Teague, no. Well, they're just oh, yeah. the than they were in the first half. I just saw Jonathan Chamwa Chachua sprint one end of the floor to the other. He ended up with the rebound, but he opened up the three-point shot because he ran the floor so hard. Keeps this one alive, but Nemhard gathers it in now for TCU. I could make a training tape of this kid, honestly. Yeah. And again, most of it happens away from the ball, but that doesn't make it any less important. This, now this is simple right here. Take a look. Drive it, dish it, dunker spot, finishes it. Look at him run, Dan. Yep. He's been really important for the Bears here in the second half. And again, the numbers don't show the sum total of his contributions. Butler using the screen. Tried to lob it up top for Chamo Chachua. Instead, it's going to be Teague for three. Oh, Let me tell you, young guys at home, that's what we call a sidestep three. Instead of shot faking into a two, he just used great footwork to slide on the three-point line and make it a three instead of a two. Yeah. This is, this is called educating your feet. Watch the kick out. Shot fake, slide to the left, knock it down. When I see guys running, you know, charges and blocks and all this nonsense in the, in the, in the lane, Dan, I think, hey, educate your feet. Don't run people over. Macy O.T. been a really good player for a long time. Of course, uh, did not start his career at Baylor. Started at UNC Asheville. He's had a couple of great years in Waco. And how about he Baylor? Is one for ten from three-point range in the first half, Fran. Four for seven in the second half. Well, that's that volatility I talked about. You're not going to keep a good shooting down, a team down for a long. You got four playmakers out there. This is where they're really dangerous. Four guys can get into the lane off the dribble. Mitchell, one of them, and he draws the foul. It's another guy we'll play in the NBA someday. He'll be a specialist. Uh, Patrick Beverly, uh, J Javon Carter type, but uh, Davion Mitchell, as good as on-the-ball defender as we've seen in the country the last couple of years. 
a semifinalist for the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year a year ago. More great action coming your way. Our full day of college basketball continues. A big matchup of the SEC. Always a fun game between Kentucky and Florida. Georgetown and Syracuse at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then UCLA and Arizona at 9. Fran, I don't know about you. I think my night's planned pretty much. I think, oh, no I think that's the schedule, oh, yeah. huh? I'm just trying to figure out what time I need to call Grubhub. Yeah. <laughs> or he just didn't want to be one of those guys who was a recruiter. And you know how the deal was sealed? Scott Drew said to him, listen, before I hire you, I want to have dinner at your house with your wife and family. And Jerome Tang and his wife had about 11 bucks on them. They made some ribs, some mash, some uh, potato salad. And Scott Drew and Jerome Tang sealed that deal over an $11 meal 18 wow. years ago. And I will tell you this, he is almost a co-head coach. He coached the first two games of the season. He has had many opportunities to leave Baylor. He, AD's out there. He's not leaving unless it's a close to high major job. He's got one of the greatest jobs in the country, and this team absolutely values his mentorship, these young players. And the reason he coached the first two games, as Fran mentioned, um, uh, Scott Drew, it tested positive for COVID back at the beginning of the year. And Baylor's schedule got was totally in flux. And then kind of last second, they scheduled a couple of games against Louisiana, Lafayette, and Washington in Las Vegas. And it was at those two games that Tang became the head coach on an interim basis. You know, Dan, I, I think it was kind of like, remember the movie Hoosiers? I think Scott Drew, he didn't get COVID on purpose. But you remember when Gene Hackman got himself thrown out of the game? Yeah. And Shooter had to come in and coach? I, I think it was almost an opportunity, and I say this jokingly, but the reality is once Scott Drew did have COVID, he was very comfortable showcasing Joe, Jerome Tang's ability to be a head coach for two games. Right. You know, we talked a little bit about programs that have a culture. You talked about Virginia, Villanova, Gonzaga, Baylor. You know what those programs also have is they've got a lot of stability on the coaching staff so yeah, in terms of the assistance point. as well, right? Oh, no question. Tommy Lloyd's been with Mark Few since the very beginning. Yep. At, at Gonzaga, the associate head coach. And you see Jerome, great in the huddles. Just a great role model, great human being. That gentleman to the left, John Jacobs, by the way, is a former Gonzaga staff member for Mark Few. And I mentioned earlier, Dan, and you know this, these coaching staffs are very close. Former Gonzaga player Rem Bacamus is on this staff as well. And you see Coach Jacobs, Mark Few, and Scott Drew talk regularly during the week. And we'd be all thrilled if they could put together that game before the end of the regular season. There you see that. We would love that. Great yeah. games Big, coming up. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. The Horned Frogs taking on Oklahoma Tuesday, 7.30 Eastern time. Kansas and Oklahoma State, Tuesday at 8 Eastern, and then TCU and number two Baylor, the rematch of this one, Saturday, February the 6th. Ian Waco, if you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPN.com slash Big 12 now. Bill Self heading home to Oklahoma State next week on ESPN Big 12 now. His alma mater, where he once led the Cowboys to the 1983 NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Earlier today, a thriller in the Big 12, Texas on a uh, last second three by Andrew Jones. A big comeback win for the Longhorns over West Virginia in Morgantown, 72 to 70. How about Texas Tech, Fran? They have scored 54 points in the mm. first half at Iowa State. They're up 24. And they'll see the Longhorns in Austin Wednesday night. Great ball movement. Teague misses the three. Tipped back out, though, by Chamwa Chachua. And yep. that'll get three more for Jared Butler, who's having himself a day. And I don't know if uh, e EJ, Everyday John's going to get an assist on that, but he is going to get a rebound. And watch and it him looks run. looks like on Here our stats comes. monitor, they, they gave him an assist. And now Teague off to the races with a dunk. And TCU did well to hang in there for about 28, 29 minutes today, but the Bears just pulling away here in the last 10 minutes. Well, turnovers will, will be the bugaboo of this young TCU team, and Jamie Dixon knows it. It's a matter of maturity, but we've seen why Baylor is so highly thought of defensively. What a great second half. They have held TCU to 21 points in the second half. Another turnover. 
Jared Butler, by the way, Fran, a season high today in 20 uh, with 28 points. That's only three off his career high. Well, and that career high was his freshman year in Allen Fieldhouse when he dropped 31. I think it's been a quiet 28, Dan, or at least an efficient 28. Yeah. Turnaround out there for Chamwa Chachu as we go into the final minute of the game. That's not his shot, but that's one of those, hey, we're up 18, big guy. Go ahead and let it go because <laughs> you kind of earned it today. <laughs> Switches on to Miles, and the three goes around and out for the freshman. And then now Baylor is going to walk it up the court on their way to an 11-0 start and all 11 wins by double figures so far this season. They'll have a 90-mile bus ride back to Waco. I'd stop at Whataburger if I were them. They probably won't, but I would. <laughs> and, and, uh, but they'll see this team in, in, uh, in a few short weeks. And another lesson for TCU. TCU will drop to two and three in league play, and they're in the toughest part of their schedule. Their next six or seven games are about as tough as it gets. Look at the hustle. Even with the score, what it is. Look at the hustle by Mitchell to prevent a layup. 